All right. Well, hey, man. Thanks again for West Coast MC. Gail Rock joining us today on this session of Off the Grid. I appreciate it, man. How is the uh, beautiful weather in California right now? My parents said it's getting cold, though. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the transition right now. But, you know, California, California weather is like day to day, man. And, and, you know, it's like it's been hot right now. It seems like it's transitioning to cool weather. But I'm still rocking shorts because it's going to be hot. You know what I mean? Like, and then and then all next week, it's supposed to be in the low 90s again. I mean, it's beautiful compared to other places, and I can't complain, man. It's it's good in the grand scheme. It's good. Awesome, man. Well, good deal, man. Well, with that, man, can we just start with a quick introduction of yourself? Tell us where you're from exactly in California, and how long you've been making music. Oh. Peace, peace, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris. I go by Gelrock, G E L R O C. Uh, some people probably read that, and if they don't know me, they say Gelrock, and you know. But the formal introduction to everybody is uh, Gelrock with a hard G, like graffiti. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I'm from I'm from Southern Cali, uh, originally from Whittier. Um, that's basically where I my stomping grounds. Um, greater Los Angeles County, you know what I'm saying, in LA, you know what I'm saying? And so like every, but I'm an all city type of dude, you know what I'm saying? Like mainly Southern Cali, but like I, I'm, I'm, I get around, you know what I'm saying? Nice, man. That's what's up, man. And so, uh, it's been a long time, man. I've been following you for a long time. I've been a fan of your music, probably 20 plus years in the game. And so I always appreciate the hard lyrics and I'm always curious, like who influences, uh, who and so I'm just curious who has influenced Gel Rock as he was like trying to become an MC. You know, and I don't know if I answered that part of when I started rapping. I mean, you know, I've said this in other interviews. I, I I'm pretty sure I grew up like most of us, um, you know, on East Coast hip hop, right? Yep. And like um, whatever was coming through the radio, um, and and it starts even like with more musical musical you know background than that like just you know funk and all of that type you know just all the all kind of music really yeah um i i would say for hip hop um you know some of my earliest influences that were probably my favorites was definitely LL Cool J uh nice uh Rakim was one of my favorites and still is you know what i mean like that's that's uh probably the most influential i would say on on like my style you know what i'm saying i'm not i mean i don't that's just he resonated with me when i was young you know what i'm saying like he yeah. just stood out and then chuck d you know what i'm saying public enemy is one of my one of my i think that was um probably i got my first record um uh, when i was a kid it was a tommy boy label record uh, <laughs> i think it was the, the pack jam record you know what yeah. i'm saying and um mm -hmm. And then my, and then, and then like the first record that like, that was a gift to me from my mom. And uh, oh, cause like I was, I was raised on a bunch of dope music. I was raised on classic rock, all type of music. Um, but, but you know, uh, my family was heavily into music. I had uncles that were in bands. My mom was a dancer, you know, the, like the whole soul train vibe and all that. So like, you know, uh, yeah, my uncles and my aunts were big influences. They were a little bit older than me and they were all, you know, we're, they were older than me, but I'm a child of the 80s, you know what I'm saying? Yep. More so a prime in my 90s, you know, coming into being a young man. But um, so I had a lot of influences from them. And my, when I, anyways, back to my first record that I was able to purchase was, you remember they used to have those ads, like where you could get a CD for a penny or something. And yeah, yeah, Columbia like, House. <laughs> Columbia, yeah, Columbia House. <laughs> so Columbia House Records, I think I ordered um, Yo Bum Rush the Show, Public Enemy, was my oh, first sure. like, record that I purchased, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so um, those, like, so Chuck D, Rakim, LL Cool J were probably my biggest influences. Um, I loved the Beastie Boys when I was young. Um, obviously Run DMC, you know what I'm yep. saying? Um, you know, so yeah, that would I would say those were like my core go to, and then as and then obviously Ice Cube on the West Coast, yeah, um, NWA of course. You can't even you know have one without the other basically. And Too Short is also one of my favorite rappers from the Bay. Uh, nice. I love Too Short. You know what I'm saying? I loved uh, all that that um, Life Is Too Short album was like my my shit. You know what I'm saying? 
So yeah. but I grew up I grew up like a break dancer and all that type of shit too. So you know what I'm saying? I was like all over the place in terms of like, you know, the culture. Um yeah. Yeah, it's dope, man. As I was going through your catalog, like uh at first, you never have a bad verse, man. It's always fire. Um I appreciate and, that. Yeah, and it's freaking crazy, man. So I was like, man, where does he draw his style from? And it's like it was very battle rap, uh, hip hop, but then the delivery was very West Coast. And I was like, man, that's such an ill combo, man. And uh, that's why I've always been a fan. Just the delivery has been cool. And then the razor sharp lyrics have always been uh, just mad attractive as I'm listening to that music, man. So super dope, man. Word up. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. It's a good time to, it was a good time to be a, a student of the game, man. Late 80s and 90s. And All right. <clears throat> yeah, so like, that's you know, where we're at, man. So, so, so I grew up like, like I think most hip hop heads our age did. Um, and those were my influences. And so of course, back then, you know, I was writing raps on some yeah. first, first name, last initial type shit, you know, like I didn't have, a <laughs> name. um, you know, all those kind of like, you know, early stages, but I didn't get serious. Um, like I would I'll, like, I started out when I really, you know, in high school, when I started, um, I, I did graffiti before I started doing music. Oh, wow. Like, uh, officially, right? Like, I was doing graffiti um, at early, early, you know, 91, 1990, 1991. I started doing graffiti in high school. And um, I would always freestyle with a lot of all my homies. I would always freestyle. And then some of the homies would later become, you know, staples in the hip hop community. Like, wow. you know, um, and they were and legends and icons in the graffiti game. So, yeah. you know, I was fortunate to be around heavyweights and they would always hear me freestyle. And I had a homie that used to write Clue from DCV, Def Crown Villains, which mm -hmm. is a legendary crew uh, from Orange County. Um, and uh, he was crew members with Boyk from DCV, AKA DJ Drez. And so, you know, before Drez kind of really started to hone his style um, and become DJ Drez, who we would know him as today, yeah. we were kids and I would, he would, you know, I would always be at his house and he'd be making mixtapes and Clue would always freestyle and he'd be like, you gotta hear Gail freestyle like this. Uh -huh. He'd be like, he got a dope voice, like you guys need to build. And so like, like we was always doing that while I was doing graffiti. The people, my crew knew that like if a beat came on or they wanted me to rap, I was gonna freestyle, right? And I had crew members from my graffiti crew, like seen differently, that would freestyle, and you know it was just all fun and games, right? Um, right. And then uh, I want to say it was probably '95. Um, like me and AWOL had already been mutual crew members of a crew called Troubles Back. Uh, oh, even back, further back. back. In the day. Yeah, even further back, we we did like party crews, like all this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. AWOL was a DJ back then. But I had heard through the homies, like I hadn't been kicking it with them like that. Like we we, like we were from the same graffiti crew, but you know, it was kind of big, right? So we didn't hang out all the time. But everybody was like, yo, AWOL's a DJ, and I think he raps, and homies would be like, dude, you gotta hear AWOL rap. And yeah, and then an and then dope. eventually the first tape that AWOL recorded was this tape called Noise. And it was a one-sided tape. One-sided tape, yeah. Yeah, and so then uh, we, that's where we, where shit got serious. I think it was 1995 okay. when I caught wind of it. And um, yeah, so it was like E times two was formed. Like it was, yeah. E times two was already around, but um, it was known as Endangered Elements at the time. Yeah. And um, on that one-sided tape, the, the, the label, you could only fit so many words, like, you know what I mean? And so <laughs> AWOL, AWOL put like EE -E crew. And so that's how we became like E times two after thereafter. You know, oh, save some space. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, and it made sense no. because, you know, it made sense as part of our legacy as long, as well as like, when you think about other hip hop crews from like independent hip hop, underground hip hop, you've got like, yeah. EE, -E, Endangered Element, E times two, and you've got Freestyle Fellowship, FF, yep. Mass Men, which I'm part of, MM, you know what I mean? Living Legends, LL. So like, you know, kind of like along those lines, it yeah. makes sense for us as well. So yeah, that was like yeah, the was first like time the we started game, getting serious. Sure. Yeah, yep, yep. 
So, so that's, that's crazy. So, um, so I'm tracking the endangered elements, you know, started about, uh, you know, early nineties. And then I heard it was like an original group of MCs first, right? Virus syndrome or origin, digit six and regret out of Whittier too. Right. And so, yeah. And then I heard that you guys weren't members until a little later on. Is that, uh, is that correct or? Yeah. So like, th that's what I was saying a moment ago, like, uh, yeah. E times two endangered elements had already been formed yet. Nothing released yet. Ah, got so, it. Like, so like yep. we would, we, we would, they would be active in ciphers at shows and, yep. um, you know, I met syndrome and, uh, you know, I already sort of had some acclaim from the graffiti game yep. and, 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 and LSD life scene differently crew, um, was, a, was a big deal back then, you know, that we were in our prime. And so they, yep. they pretty being from Whittier, all those dudes you just mentioned from my crew, were from Whittier, so they already knew. We already knew who each other were. Virus and I, you know, we did the party crew thing along with AWOL, and so oh, like, it's all you know, we already circle. had that circle. Yeah, it was a really small circle, and um, mm -hmm. they had they had um, heard me rap, and then the next thing I know, Virus was like Virus and Syndrome were like the founders of E Times Two originally, okay. and then once once Syndrome brought me around for a couple a uh, couple ciphers. Um, like we were doing like dictaphone, like mixtapes and recording our shit, you know? And I remember, <laughs> I remember after the first cypher that I had with them, like we would go into a, into like virus's garage or dust off's garage. We dust off was another member. Um, they used to live across the street from each other. And we would just put on beats that AWOL made or beats that like were coming from fat Jack through by way of AWOL that he would just give us to rap to and shit. And we would get in the garage and we would just battle. We'd pick teams and battle each other. So that was, <laughs> that's like, like, good days. Yeah, yeah. And so like that's that's how the crew sort of formed. And I remember Virus like after the first cipher that I I joined with them. And this is yeah. before no before noise. Um, Virus recorded this rap and he did a roll call of the crew and he hit me up in the roll call and that was like the official stamp you know I was part of E times 2 uh, and, okay. and so th then Good. we went in on the on the noise tape and so yeah. I was I was there from the inception uh, in terms of like our releases you know what i mean but yeah. but but the crew had technically started with them yeah prior to the releases yo i love it man is that one sided tape is that still around like i tried to look for it to listen to it but I, I couldn't, man. I'm, I, yeah. I, I just, I have a copy of it. I just yeah. pulled out a bunch of tapes because I'm, 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 I'm kind of uh, in a new, new house that I just got, and um, yeah, I'm so I'm like unpacking all this shit, and I pulled out a bunch of a box of tapes, and I was like, man, I'm missing a bunch of tapes. I know I have that noise tape somewhere. You gotta, you, you gotta know? digitize and the, it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. And so, uh, what was I gonna say about that? Um, yeah, so we did that tape. Um, Man, I forgot what I was gonna say, but yeah, man, and 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 the type of person I am, yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm very I'm very loyal, I'm very committed to my crew. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't grow up that was clear. Uh, with my half. I didn't I didn't have I didn't grow up with my half brother and and sisters until later in their life, um, and so my crew was my family, and so you know I did I everything I did was from my crew. And so while I was probably one of the last members, I sort of took the crew by my reins because that yeah. was my personality. And once we dropped on noise, I immediately knew, like, I, because of my graffiti crew, I already knew that I was fucking with heavyweights. And yeah. I knew that AWOL, and he was very serious about the craft way back then. And so I just knew Amazing. right out the gate, like, this is not a joke for me. This is yeah. not a hobby. We're about to do this. I love and it. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like that's 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 where so I became the engine of the crew. You know, like I, I was I was one of the few who had a car and was driving everybody to the studio. Like I was like, oh, I got, you know, studio time with 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 massive, you know, for our first EP. And you know what I mean? Like we just yeah. So I just I had a lot of initiative and a lot of drive and a lot of vision to see that like I knew we were going to do stuff that we yeah. were going to put out and document. And you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I got two points from uh, that awesome story that you told. So you talked about pulling out tapes. And so I think like the kids these days, man, they don't understand the grind of selling CDs and tapes and passing them oh. out. It's so easy to do it online. And I appreciate cats like you who actually went through that. And I remember, 
you know, trying to get someone to listen to my tape at the shows. And uh, it was crazy, man. Do you, you, oh, <laughs> any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I, I'm, cool. I'm really happy to see that tapes have made a comeback like records. Yeah. That, that's very helpful for us because we put out, you know, merch. You know, we put out product. I put out a lot of records and tapes. And, and so that, that played in our favor that there's a comeback with that. And, yeah. um, but I, I, I was a grinder. You know what I'm saying? So like I, I push tapes. I would be at the shows. I remember, like it was Mystic Journeyman, Jism, <laughs> Mystic Journeyman, Jism, myself, and AWOL, and like, you know, maybe like the CVEs. Like we were really pushing our music, like pushing our tapes at shows. Like I was, you know, I had a box of tapes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? That 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 forearm, that forearm carry yeah, right there, yeah. bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I carried I carried that box of merch like it was a baby. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And uh and and did that, man. Like that that was that was you know. And back then, not only was I motivated to move the music, but also it was making some cool change too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so I was a hustler. Yeah. yeah. I was I was selling selling weed or selling tapes, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like there wasn't social media to post the videos, man. So the only way to get out was to perform right. and have them see you, man. So you lived through that, man. And yeah, that's man. awesome, man. You understand the hustle and how much easier it is today, I guess, right? Yeah, it's it's um it's still very I try I try to tell people like, you know, they ask me about like, you know, merch and 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 how to put a record together and and yeah. campaign it campaign it in ways and things like that yeah but but i mean just merch in general you guys are so tight and uh as i um as i'm talking to you i always see i see all the album covers and i'm always like the art that you guys have on your work and awol one when he sells the shirts just very creative with the art are you also a part of the uh the art on the albums too or is yeah AWOL well certain friends do that? um they're they're all they're all, all the artwork from the records are our friends. Okay. Um, they're all so they're sick, all, man. Yeah, they're all people that mutually, you know, want to work with us. I, I would say that, um, you know, I I'm like I said, my I'm the engine, you know, for the crews that I'm part of for the most yeah. part. So like I pretty much facilitate a lot of the artwork, like you know, even for the cloaks. You know, the last record, AWOL was like, hey, what do you think about this person? Because usually it's me. I'm like, yo, I want to get this person. He's always like, he's like, hell yeah, you know? But, uh, <laughs> Griffin one from CBS did the uh, a Cloakwork Orange album cover. But Dude, like, again, it's all, it's all bananas. Yeah. yeah. So it's all, it's all, it's all love. It's all, you know what I mean? That was probably the first record that I was like, not part of like being the main facilitator to get the artist to do the music, to do the cover. Yeah. Um, and then I think the second, exalt the anti uh with mega was just a picture of us that he did like that was the first probably record sitting on the stairs was, right yeah yeah that's right yeah so that was a little bit more on his part but other than that all this other stuff has pretty much been facilitated by me through artists that are crew members or extensions of friends yeah. that you know what i mean well did you have any idea that uh that you would take it like this far, man. So it's like, man, 20 plus years in the game and you had any idea that this would be the outcome when you first started rapping? It's gotta I mean, be surreal, man. I mean, it, it, I would say that like, I knew something special was brewing back then because of just the people, the amount of talent that I was surrounded by. Okay. I, I was probably um, optimistic, you know, probably optimistic and delusional thinking that we would blow up at some point, not because of our style, but just because the, the amount of talent that was, we were surrounded by, including, that includes Fat Jack and, and all the bloat heads and the good lifers. Like, you know, yeah. I thought like, I thought like, well, if this person blows up, that's gonna give exposure for all of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so I did think that we would crack at some point, you know? And we were doing shows, we were doing things and, you know, the underground and, and, and the overground, you know, are very closely connected more so than people realize. Yeah. And in, in, in like the, in the industry, you know, especially here in the West coast, there was a lot of connectivity, you know, AWOL, you know, being great friends with, with exhibit and like all of those type of just close connective, you know, tissues that were amongst yeah. all the talent. So um, I think, I did feel that way early on, 
uh, I did not envision that that would not transpire. And then we would still be doing this anyways. Um, that just through the persistence of, um, of, of the love for, for making music just yeah. became, you know, a part of life. And then time flies. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how the last 10 to 15 years flew by so quickly. Yeah. That, that I'm, I think I'm more intrigued by how fast time has passed and uh, not necessarily the collection of music that we've made in, in, in the output, the output yeah. that was going to be there. Just the fact that time has flown by so quickly. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta appreciate your impact, man. And uh, you know, I just, man, it's long, longevity, just being still there and your continuous contributions, man. Freaking amazing, man. So shout out for all the work that you've done for hip hop. Appreciate it. For sure, man. And uh, I remember too, it was like, I don't know how I found it out, but I think you're part Filipino too, right? Yeah, my mom's side of the family. Um, okay. Are you half so, a quarter? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm half. Like, I'll, I don't, I didn't do, my mom didn't do like the, you know, the DNA test and all that shit. But like, yeah. my, 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 my grandfather is from the Philippines. He lives in the Philippines, but she okay. was, a, my mother was adopted. So we didn't grow up in the Filipino family. My mother was adopted at a young age. Um, uh. But she met her real father in like 2001, 2002. He came from the Philippines. Um, and I think wow. he, he, he um, I didn't get a chance to meet him, but um, he and my grandmother is mixed too with, with, with she's got Filipino in her too. So anyways, yeah. um, and my dad's Mexican. So I don't know. And then my son is, my son's Filipino, his mom's Filipino too. So. You know. Nice man, you know Filipinos, man. Once you find out somebody's a Filipino yeah. man, <laughs> yeah. like, it's a, it's a like, community, oh, shit, man. Yo, Rock's Filipino. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, I, I mean, honestly, I'll be very, very transparent. Like a lot of my friends know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And my friends all know, but I didn't grow up with a lot of Filipino friends. I did yeah. when I was in, in like elementary, because I grew up in like Cerritos and Lakewood. <laughs> So, you know, you're already laughing, bro, because you already know. Yeah. So, like, my best friends were Filipino back then, back when I was, like, you know, house dancing and shit and all that shit back before. You know, I used to break dance, break dance, then, you know, evolved to that shit with the Filipino clique. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I moved to to Whittier, La Mirada in, in 90. Um, but before that, I was in, in Cerritos, Lakewood, and even North Long Beach for a while. Yeah, Filipino town. Well, that's dope, man. Amazing cultures to be a part of, man. So I, I just and, thought it was and cool. The crazy thing is, like you were saying, like once you know that you're Filipino, like like the the crazy thing is, like uh, you know, I never really leaned into my Filipino background other than just being proud. Uh, yep. And 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 my son being Filipino, and you know, I mean, yep. he looks Filipino for sure. Uh -huh. And uh, and and then when I, it, it's weird because hip hop, like all the MCs who know each other. That are yeah. Filipino, right? You know, then it, it became more of a community, <laughs> right, and, right? And all the and all the it's DJs, so and shit, right? And all the DJs, of course, right? And so like, <laughs> Yo, fuck. like, like, so then that made me more proud and like, you know, embrace it even more to like tell people like outside of my immediate friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what's up. So. Yeah, it's a small population. I'd be always making shit up, like uh, telling my homies, "Oh man, you hear Michael Jordan's like ten percent Filipino," and so, but it's uh, but it's always exciting to find out too, man. So I thought that yeah. was awesome when I found out. But man, with that, you got to tell me the story about how you came up with your name, Gil Rock. And when I was doing all the research, I would see you reference as Gil One. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just nowadays, just hard Gil Rock. So is there, is your story yeah. behind? Yeah, just because I started out doing graffiti. So it was Gel One before, right? I just, um, the name, it was purely conceived from a graffiti standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know what's crazy? Uh, this is crazy. Um, my first graffiti name was Reigns. <laughs> Spelled the same way or? R E I N S. Oh, um, I like it, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. sick. I dropped the G because, uh, you know, you, the idea was you didn't have, like, a long name to hit up and write. You were trying to get up and get out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, so, like, that was, like, uh, I, I, I was still trying to figure out my graffiti identity. And then, like, once it became apparent that this wasn't a hobby either, that, yeah. like, you know, I was taking it serious. Everybody's like, you should probably shorten your name just because we were about getting up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so then it was, I remember my homie, 
Misk, he was like, well, why don't, I was like, well, what should I change my name to? And he was like, well, what are your favorite letters to do? And I was thinking, and he's like, and also you got to find something that's original. And so I loved G's and E's and L's and it was quick. Boom, three letters. Ah, I got and it. I love I loved the symmetry of a lowercase G to a L, to a capital L, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I could make my lowercase G's like the L's and the E could fit in the middle and I could do a bunch of like, you know, styles with just Gel and then Gel 1. So there was Gel 1 and then um, when I was doing some of these early rap records, it was Gel 1 and then um, at some point it was, an, I think, uh, another album okay. that came out and um, it became Gel, Gel Rock. It just, again, I, some, I think uh, AWOL put me on a poster as Gel Rock because we, because people will call me Gel Rock, you know what I mean? Like, yep. and so he put me as Gel Rock. Um, and I think the first time he did it, he used the K and then I eventually dropped the K because okay. I, I don't know uh, why I did that, but I don't remember. There was no special. I like it. Just, yeah. And then, because, and I knew, oh, and when I started writing, Gel, I, I I made it a point to pronounce it Gel so that it would be no other way that somebody could be Gel. They they might write Gel in another side of the world. There might be another G E L, but it won't be pronounced Gel. You know, yeah. what I mean? so it was all about originality. Um, and so yeah, after a few records, Gel Rock, it was you know basically the transition became when I could no longer be actively doing graffiti because I got busted and gotten older and had to be more responsible. And so it was just like, you yeah. know what, Gil, Gil Rock is the transition. I'm just all about this music. And even though I still paint now, um, you know, it's just um, just smarter about what I do and how I go about but about approaching things and, and walls and concepts and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I never thought about that, man. How you got to keep the name short because you got to bomb and run, man. So then that's good. That's great, man. Just uh, yeah, yeah that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. Well, good, man. Well, hey, man, we've talked about it and we've referenced it, but um, you are part of the amazing LA underground scene. Uh, you were there when it was conceived, and you're part of one of the uh, major crews. Can you talk to me just about the LA underground sound, or just a little bit about the uh, LA underground movement? how you guys are all connected. And it, and if you want to tie in just a little bit about Project Blow, that, that'd be awesome to hear about. Yeah, man. I mean, um, you know, Whittier was a very, um, it, it, it's a very uh, cultured city. And a lot of people know that, right? Like, I mean, whether it was your cruising Whittier Boulevard back in the cruising days, because we did all that too, you know what I'm saying? We were cruising Whittier Boulevard and all that sort of tied in. And, and so Whittier is definitely on the map as a place that many people are familiar with. And so it was cultured from a music perspective. I mean, we, we take pride in the fact that, um, you know, we, we, we feel like we're the originators from Whittier, me, a wall, the E times two crew, the tunnel rats are also from Whittier. Um, and so it was an important vein, I think in greater Los Angeles County, that a lot of people knew about, right? And so um, AWOL was a big connector um, for a lot of us because he was a grinder too. And so um, he used to um, he used to take the bus to Fat Jacks and Fat Jack lived in LA, of course. Uh, um, and that's how he got started with the Mass Men crew. And um, and so we, we got leaked a lot of underground shit through AWOL. Like we would just go to AWOL's pad and you know, he'd be playing Fat Jack beats from tapes that he just got when he came, went over there. And then we would, eventually be going, we would eventually be going over there. And, and, you know, all that was like the Good Life crew. And so we, you know, I got to go to the Good Life like once or twice towards the end. And then, um, you know, the blow just became the next part of our, you know, legacy in terms of like visiting the blow. I yeah. wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't say that like I, at, at first, it was like more like we went sparingly, not okay. every Thursday, not every yep, Thursday, yep. you know what I'm saying? Because we were busy building our own stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we were very connected, but, you know, we also, at, at the same time, E times two and AWOL were building our own thing in Whittier and we were, AWOL was throwing shows. And so we had our own scene to curate and, 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 and and build. Yeah. And so, but eventually, you know, we, we started doing music with those, all the bloats and, you know, we'd be there a little bit more regularly battled and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And, that's um, and, amazing, and, and, man. Yeah. And, and by that time, 
you know, it wasn't just about Blowed. You had Elements and other shows that were happening with regularity, yeah. community, committee, all that type of stuff. And so, like, we would just all see each other at shows and be ciphering. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in, term, in terms of the style, I mean, for me, you know, like... I, I just can't get away from the forefathers of the styling, which was basically came out of the good life and the fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, early yeah. On. like I grew up on the East coast hip hop, but once I was exposed to West coast underground hip hop, yep. it became very apparent that there was a whole nother universe to explore. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was more innovative. It was more creative and, um, flexible and, and dynamic, you know what I mean? Compared to, yeah. I think what most people experienced on the East coast, um, because it was like, it just became very apparent that like there was a, a real, the populace of people that were in the hip hop only were exposed to what they heard on the radio or right. on TV raps. And that was it where I was exposed to this other side of the universe. And it felt like home. Oh, you know what I mean? Beautiful. And so, um, yeah, that's just kind of it, man. It, and and we, it 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 was just really underground and grimy, and it was it didn't have to be something that felt like unachievable when yeah. we heard what was coming out of the East Coast. You yeah. know, it was like, oh, we can make this, we can do this right now, and you know, we could stretch a style, we could do, you know, we could be um, challenge each other with, with our lyrics and, um, and, and, and also battle, right? Like we, it was a very, battling was a very, it Super was the main, big. it was the main thing. And then you had like, obviously, you know, uh, if you tell the, the bigger story of West coast hip hop, you had a lot of the gangster influence and, and that's, that's right. where we, that's where we came from too. Right. Cause we were party crews. We were from Whittier. We were cruising Whittier Boulevard. You know, I, I had homies that were in gangs, but they were part of life seen differently. So, you know, it, it was all of that stuff, my, you know, my background, you know, my father being a gang member and just, you know, it, it, so it came with a little bit of a hard edge too. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, there was a aspect of West Coast underground hip hop that was naturally forged out <clears throat> of like that hard element. Yeah. Uh, but also stylistically very innovative in terms of how we approach things yeah and that yeah. That, that that aggressive battle shit you know was yeah. like a very uh instrumental like a part of the approach because it yeah. challenged everybody and there, yeah, everything right, else, man. everything oh. everything everything when everything seemed really boring except for what we were doing <clears throat> I really deviated away from like a lot of East Coast hip hop, except for like the core De La Soul and everybody who you really loved. But yeah. like a lot of other shit that started coming out of the East Coast, which, you know, the, the, the bigger hip hop community that doesn't know about underground hip hop in the West Coast fell in love yeah. with. Like a lot of the slower stuff. I'm not going to mention no names, but I, I fell yeah. out of love. I fell out of like with a lot of that stuff because it just was boring to me. Okay. You know what I mean? I was just like, that's not challenging to me. That's if I, I if I would be like, I'd be like if I was on that beat, I would have killed that way harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so. think you guys evolved hip hop, man, to be honest. And so, yeah, you're right, man. Like I started like thinking about rhyming early nineties. And then I had no, I had no idea about like West coast underground hip hop. I was living overseas and then I moved to Cali in 96, 97 and then I started hearing all that stuff and that blew my mind. I just, I had to be a part of it. And so I started to tailor my stuff that way. So that's amazing that you were part of the, that evolution, man, that change. Right. And so it's so cool. Such a, such a large impact in the community. That's so dope, man. Yeah. It's true. <clears throat> man. It is, that, that's, it is surreal at looking back on it now, you know? Yeah. The mutual respect too, uh, amongst the, the OG LA hip hop crews is amazing. I see you guys hopping on each other's songs and just the love and support is very inspiring. Um, and then you mentioned something earlier too, uh, that, you know, you were big on loyalty and, and that was one thing I noticed about you too, man. You're very loyal to your crews, man. So like the cloaks, uh, with you exalt the anti, uh, I mean, just, I could tell the love that you have for your crew, man. And that, that's awesome too, man. Just uh, yeah, right, folks, man, and I, I love that, dude. So really cool. Yeah. Brothers in arms, man. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And so can you tell me a little bit about um, Abulano Records, how that came about? And so what, what's the story about it? Just a quick overview. Yeah, I was actually telling somebody about this last night, but um, the label <clears throat> was created in 1996 by the homie Cirque. Okay. Cirque was one of the first in-house producers for Etons 2. It was his label. He made made up the word <laughs> Abulano, formed out of two words, which was above land. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so that's, yeah, so uh, Abulano was his baby and um when we met him he had already put out a couple of tapes a couple of compilations that um featured underground some underground cats from like pico rivera and um and and he was working with one of the black eyed peas i think back then they were called the at bat clan that's right yeah and so um you know he was working with those heads and then when we met him it was after it was right after we dropped the Three Eyed Cows tape with AWOL. After that was released, so probably ninety seven, ninety eight, whenever that was, um, and um, we met him. We went to his studio, and basically we took over everything. We just kind of like E times two crashed the studio, and we immediately went to work on our first album, first full length album with him. Yeah, um, and. He was producing stuff and he was putting out our records and he he was he ran the label extremely legitimate like he had know-how and he had resources um and he he showed me personally who again was sort of like leading the crew like this is how we release a record this is we're gonna hit every college radio station in the country <coughs> we're gonna you know he was he would show me like check out this review for the, for the EP, check out this, um, we're number three behind Cypress Hill in Nebraska. We're number, <laughs> you know, at this college radio. And like, so I, I saw things manifesting like that. He would send us pictures of record stores in other States that remember they used to do like the listening stations and they would build the listening stations and draw shit and do yeah. all this shit. And like the E times two albums would be in the listening station next to the commercial rap records, you know what I mean? And, oh, so dope, man. And so all of that was like the beginnings <clears throat> of Avalano Records with E Times 2. And so he basically curated and ran the label, created the sites, did everything. He did so much work and um, paid us. And, you know, it was wow. very legitimate, dude. It was very legitimate. It felt very real. Like on Fridays, I was going to get <laughs> paid, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It was really oh, dope. And we we traveled to to different shows and went to scribble jams and oh, label shoot. label sponsored. We were you know you know he was flying there meeting us while we took the Greyhound. He was like the cool pimp label head. You know, <laughs> wow. send, us on the, send the crew on the Greyhound across the across the country through trials and mayhem and yeah. stories and infinite stories. And he'd fly in like a pimp with our new record and shit, you know? <laughs> and, um, oh, and, uh, and he, he became one of my best friends and, uh, and, and probably 2006, maybe, and maybe, maybe it was 2003. He eventually, <clears throat> um, you know, focused on his family and, and formally signed the label over to me. And so then I took the label okay. and, uh, and took it on and just kept it and kept moving with it and, and, and did as much as I could. I, I could not, keep up with how legitimate that he ran it. Um, but I do as much as I can. There's a lot of behind the scenes shit that I do that many people will never see that I yeah. don't share on the socials to support the label in terms of like one pages and bios and all this electronic press kits and things for records. So yeah. there's very much a lot of behind the scenes <clears throat> stuff that I do that, you know, at this point seems trivial sometimes, but I still do it. You know what I mean? Important. Like, I don't, I don't, I still feel like there's an importance of professionalism and presentation yeah. for our releases that really support the distribution arms that I do have for these records across overseas and, and so on. Yeah, the, the roster is dope and the layout of the website is very user friendly and sick, man. I, I think it's awesome, man. It yes. could probably use a refresh. He did, Cirque made that whole lab, uh, website in. It's been that way for some time. If I could, you know, I, that's that's when something I've been lagging on. It does. It's not up to date as it could be. But there are links to the Bandcamp, which keeps it sort of refreshed, you know. And then, yeah, uh, the front homepage I can update. But I mean, in terms of like the overall layout and view, would probably take more of an overhaul 
from him because he built it like old school before it was all easy. You could just do it on your damn cell phone now, you know? It's, pre it's pretty dope to me, man. But man, it's, it's great. And so you get the opportunity to work with all these people. And so when you're doing stuff with the cloaks or when you're doing stuff with Exalt the Anti, is there a different Gel Rock personality on the way that you do music? Or do you, it's just, do you like that consistency, man? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I definitely have a, a it might be subtle to other people, but for me, it's very intentional in terms of like Exalt the Anti for me is a, a culmination of, you know, like embracing my brother Meg Abusive and us embracing Deesky, but also yep. paying homage to my Mega's uh, reputations, you know, which was battling, right? So you're going to get a lot of that yeah. hard, especially when we do shit over his production. Uh, you know, I think there's something yeah. very special about what we do together over his production specifically <clears throat> and and because of our how much music we've done together over the years. Like we have definitely developed our sound, even if it is very attackish, you know, but I, I think, it, yeah, I think, I think that to me is encapsulates um, uh, Exalt the Anti, which essentially is an extension of E times two, because E times two has, you know, while we're still around, not active, right? Because people yeah. have grown and done their things. So it has allowed me to stay and, and, and also evolve the sound because E times two was probably a little more dark. <clears throat> um, and Exalt the Anti is a little more like, hip hop, but, but still very tough. And so that yeah. element to me is very important, uh, with, with, with exalt the anti and the sure. cloaks, the cloaks is, is, is probably, um, a little bit more experimental and a yeah. little bit more diverse in terms of range of style. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you some of those hard raps for sure. Yeah, um, there will be elements of battling, but in a different way, maybe more intellectually, as opposed yep. to more forthright in your face. Yep. Um, you'll get some of that too through the cloaks, but it's also conceptually probably more um, of a focal point for us to be more concept driven. Yeah, and um, and 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 stylistically, always pushing the boundaries of what me and AWOL can do together yep. in, in concert with Awkward as our producer. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, AWOL one is uh, very charismatic too, and is delivery. And I think your voices they they mesh real well together, man. So I love how it weaves in the sound that you bring. And then you're right, man. The distinct uh, differences between uh, that sound and then Exalt the Anti, which is very barrage warlike. And it's oh man, that last single you guys put out when it rains it pours. Oh, oh yeah, the Anti Exalt the Anti. Don't yeah. don't ask why. I was yeah. like, God dang. Man, I, I, we're gonna we're, so exalt the anti three is in the works, and um, yep. we're gonna put we're gonna put that song on there because I, we felt like it was slept on, and we feel like it's a classic. Oh, um, the, yeah. the way the intro! Oh, holy shit! Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, and just kind of going back to the differences in approach with my groups, I also yep. use my solo records, right, to to be more for, personal. For. I, I I focus more on personal development, more personal reflection, also incorporating all those elements from the other crews. Yep. Um, and so sometimes I might do a solo record that is more, um, you know, more reflective of what I'm going through in my life, uh, but also recognizing that every record has balance, right? Like you should have some balance. So it'll have like, you know, like Poetry of War was my last solo record. Yep. Um, which, which I have right here. And I, and I have it. Yep. That's an amazing record, man. Yeah, poetry of war. Um, you know, it's got a lot of the it's got a lot of the battle elements for sure. I wanted to come out like really putting forth a strong effort, um, but also over production that is very big by Ja Blues, DJ Ja Blues. Yep. Um, a different type of production, but also if you listen to like the song Higher Thoughts on there, it's very personal. So I try to bring balance. And there's things that I can rap about and write about in my personal life on my solo records that don't necessarily make sense to do on an Exalt the Anti record or a Cloak yep. record. Um, <clears throat> but at the same token, I, you know, I try to bring some of those elements a little bit into even <clears throat> Exalt the Anti and, uh, and, and, and even in the Cloaks. Um, you might get a song as opposed to where, you know, a verse on a topic 
that is not too personal, but does, you know, it's like there is some of that in there, you know, so. So sick. And, and I want to just really quickly just peel the onion back on a couple of those crews that we mentioned. So uh, for um, Exalt the Anti, D-Ski, Mega Abusive, and you, how did you guys all meet and how did that combination happen? So uh, um, Mega Abusive is from San Jose, right? And D-Ski yeah. from LA. Well, we used to do shows out in San Jose, you know, back okay. in the day. I'd be out there with the shapeshifters and, you know, um, I think I went up through there on a tour with AC and Ab and AWOL before and, you know, and so Mega was the local holding it down. And, um, ah, you know, okay. he had his he had his reputation. Yeah, we, were, <laughs> we had our reputations, you know, and then yeah. um, so we, 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 you know, we were doing compilations and, you know, there was a lot of people on mutual records back then. And then eventually, um, I think it was 2010, maybe we went to South by Southwest, and oh, Mega and, Texas, yeah, yeah. Mega and I were talking before we went out there. We linked, we did a few shows together, and then the next thing you know, we talked about doing a record. And then, um, you know, we were, and we were also part of um, the LA to the Bay Collective, you know, right. which was which was Disky. And so we were all mutual friends from LA to the Bay in releasing our individual music. And um, it just made sense by the time we got down the path with making the Exalta Anti record that we were gonna incorporate Disky to master it and also put cuts on it. Yeah. And so we were just like, you know, you're our brother and we want you to be part of the crew. And so, so cool, man. yeah, so that's how, how we formed it. Like probably 2010, we made the first record and by the time it was ready for mixing and mastering, he was had his heavy hand in it. So that's how Exalta Anti formed. Yeah, that first physical release was that um, "Hip Hop Against the World." Uh, yeah, "Hip Hop Against uh, the World." Yeah, 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 the tracks, man. I really enjoyed that album. Just the self-titled song "Exalt the Anti" was super dope, and then uh, uh, the other two that really stuck out to me was the "Welcome Backyard" and "Rappers Today." So, so oh so yeah, dope, I man. think um, I think I think um, uh, "Rappers Today" might have been the first song that we did for it. Nice. I think so. Dude, that's wild. And then you guys uh, had some history performing at South by Southwest. I've been to there. Uh, I've been there. I lived there. Well, not too far. And then I uh, also performed out there. So that, yeah, man. Uh, South by Southwest is crazy, man. Just, uh, it's a dream yeah. for live music, man. Yeah, I think, that, I think the first one I went to was in an 07, maybe. Um, wow. So, yeah, man. Yeah, and then uh, you guys did a second album, which is Failure to Comply, which is also um, another amazing album, too. And then uh, Mega Busa produced that album, too? No, so that one, we actually branched out. Deesky did a couple of, of songs okay. that he produced. Um, so so Hip Hop Against the World was entirely produced by Mega Busa. So right. Failure to Comply was a collective of Awkward from the Cloaks produced a couple joints. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Av Avatar, rest in peace. Yeah. Produced wow, a joint. DC wow. produced a couple joints and Mega produced a couple joints. So that one was, and then with this next one, um, Mega will do like 98% of the record. I think just that, that um, uh, when it rains, it pours, will be on the record. It might be the only one that's not produced by him. Yeah. What a good teaser, man. Um, with that, um, you know, you think about just the time uh, that you've been and you've invested in the game. And so, I mean, just from, from your perspective, how have you evolved a, as a rapper and just the way that you think and the way that you do things? Yeah. You know, day one, Gail Rock into uh, what you're at, where you're at now? Um, you know, people that know me, not a lot of people, I'm, I'm, I, I don't let a lot of people in. My circle is very small. Mm. Um, AWOL knows me and like sees what I do in my personal life. And he, we, he introduced me to a friend the other day, to one of his friends, uh, somebody that's part of his family. And he said, uh, you know, he said, this is Gail. Um, you know, he was describing like me as a person to this person. And he said, he's somebody that definitely uses all of his skills in every aspect of his life. Yeah. And so I would say that um, music has helped me not only um, develop my mindset, but also my work ethic um, has helped my craft with music. It's like, it's, it's all very 360. My life is very, everything is intertwined, everything that I do. Um, and, and so as an MC, 
just the fact that I can compartmentalize these different groups and how I approach things yeah. is a lot is, is very um, consistent with how I approach life in different relationships. Right. And being able to focus on relationships and, and, and the importance of relationships. But as an MC, I have matured much faster, I think, because I'm a big thinker. And so I write a lot. I overthink and I and I pour a lot out uh, good, bad and ugly. I'm always yeah. writing. And so, you know, when I focus on my solo records, there is a lot of a lot of processing uh, of, of what I'm going through. There's a yeah. lot of like, you know, some of it is intentional. Uh, where I'm addressing the listener. I'm very conscious of the listener. Uh, so I'm, I'm conscious of what I'm putting out, how I'm putting it out. Um, and so, yeah, man, I, I just think that uh, as an MC, I've grown as a writer. Okay. You know, when I started, it was really about rap. It was really about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was about rap. Over time, Delivery, I honed yeah. my craft and focused on writing. And, nice. And, and, and saying things, uh, getting things off that are meaningful to me. And music, it's been more an evolution of music as opposed to just hip hop anymore. Man. And uh, trying to achieve different types of records yep. that, that I haven't done. So working with different producers helps me achieve different goals that I have with records, whether they're solo or group. Sure. And all of that is maturation in terms of achieving new levels for me personally. Yep. Um, and so even like my next solo record, uh, well, I have a couple in the works, but like the one that I'm primarily focused on right now, um, I think you will vi- you will be able to hear it and be like, "Damn, this is some other shit." I can't you know, wait. like, and you'll you you know, I think the listener will it it'll be very clear that there's a lot less ego in the record. Wow. So you know, I'm constantly evolving as a person and as a writer and as an MC. Yeah. Wow, that's phenomenal. I can't wait till this new project drops. You got a lot of. Yeah, hard projects coming up, man. Great, with Exalt the Anti. Yeah. Exalt sure the Anti Cloaks 3, works. Cloaks 4 is in the works. Damn. Um, and a couple different solo albums um, are in the works as well. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very active. It kind of goes back to what I told you with E Times 2. Like, I'm, a, I, I'm yep. definitely an, an, a, a worker. You know what I'm yep. saying? I'm a grind. I'm a grinder from uh, out there selling tapes like I'm holding a baby in that forearm, you know what I mean? Like I told you, uh, I, I stay writing, man. I, I just stay focused on, on, and it's just a part of life at this point. Yeah. It's not even, it's, 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 it's what I do. It's not a, I don't have to, I just, I'm just being me. It's just what I do. Super prolific, man. Well, thanks for sharing that story. And uh, I do want to also surface uh, your relationship with AWOL One, uh, where you guys come and form with Awkward, the group known as the Cloaks. Yeah. And so yeah, man, uh, artwork, music is super dope, and uh, it sounds like you guys have probably been friends almost, probably close to thirty years, maybe is what it yeah, seems. Yeah, man. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, man. We we <clears throat> childhood friends like most of my crews. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, we we had been making so much music together since that noise tape. Um, always doing always doing shows together and it just yeah. we were talking about doing a record before the cloaks came about as a group okay like, years before and actually we did a um an album which was like a prelude to the cloaks um which was like i don't know like almost 20 songs of of mutual huh. songs that we had done together Jeez. Um, and it was the album was called um life before death okay and um it's it's it was very limited run, um, but it was stacked with a lot of stuff that we had done together, not inclusive of everything. We've done too much stuff, but it was a really dope um, record that we enjoyed, and the people that got it loved it. And then um, and then <clears throat> we formed the identity of the Cloaks just by conversation. Um, you know the the concept being you know almost anonymous. You know, kind of being anti. You know social media anti like at one point we didn't even want to use our names a wall and gal rock we just wanted to do the cloaks but that was almost impossible to do they would know (laughs) they would they would would know and and, yeah and 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 it would be hard to promote it so oh and 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 it would be hard to just execute what we needed to so the cloaks was a lot around anonymity and um and 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 concept and uh you know just trying to be very I don't know. Um, just a lot of just 
not what everybody else was doing. We wanted yeah. an identity that didn't seem like it was all about what everybody was trying to flex on, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. And we formed yeah. the cloaks and, yeah. yeah. Is awkward from, he's not from the U.S., right? Is he from the U.K.? No, or... he's, he's from the U.K. He's from That's the what school. I thought, yeah, okay. He had already been producing stuff for a lot of our mutual friends. Yeah. Um, and uh, he and I were talking quite a bit before <clears throat> the Cloaks album. Yeah. And um, once we came up with the idea for the Cloaks, we knew that we wanted one producer. Okay. And he had sent me beats, and I had sent ideas to AWOL, and AWOL was like, dude, this is it. This is it. And <laughs> we, we quickly formed um, the concept, and things just took off pretty quickly with Awkward. And then yeah. we just we just knew we had something because like we, the way we communicate with him and I had met him already. He'd come to a bloat anniversary. So oh, it's not sick. like it was all it wasn't just all Internet shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and we we are really close friends and good brothers. Like we saw each other's families grow up. We share a lot behind the scenes and, you know, we're very personal and we talk pretty frequently. So um, yeah. it just made sense. Yeah, that's so dope, man. And I really enjoyed your first album, the self-titled album. That was super dope. Um, and again, I mentioned it earlier in the interview that just the, the way that your voices mesh together, it just it works. It's very different and it just meshes really well, man. Yeah. And, and uh, so some of the favorite tracks I wanted to just let you know, man, just uh, Insult to Injury or AWOL was on the hook and then the aggressive hard raps and then his, uh, you know, his delivery was amazing. And then my other favorite song on the album was uh, Secret Escape Plan. Which is really that's, I, that's one of my favorite songs, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like all it's, right. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you even call that insult to injury as well, just because those it's I would have never expected either of those songs to be mentioned for that. Oh, but I think they're so, they're so yeah, dope. No, they're, they are dope, but you know, it's just I don't know. There, I think there's obvious ones that I feel like they're obvious, but you know, when you make records, you know this when you make yeah. records, it's never the ones that you think. Are gonna dude, fucking be the so ones that resonate. That's true, man. Oh, absolutely. It's never like that, dude. It's it's always like some random songs, and you're just like, really? That's dope, man. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's so fucking true, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. I had to tell uh, one of the producers I'm working with right now. He was like, "What do you think about this one? Do you think it needs this, that, and the other?" And I was like, "Dude, that's gonna be people's favorite song. Watch." Like, uh -huh. it, and he's like, "You're right. It's always the one that I least expect to pop is gonna pop." And I'm like, "Dude, trust me. That's the yeah. way it works every time." You could think that the lead single is the man. one. You think the lead single is the one, but it's not. It, you know, yeah. it's not for the listener. And, and and so, anyways, I'm glad that you mentioned those two songs. Uh, Secret Escape Plan for me is a personal favorite, uh -huh. um, just because it's a very feel song. You know, you you know, we we it, it's it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is funny, man. I, I think still to this day that that is so true, man. Just every song. And I never tell people the song, you know, like, oh, that song's the one that almost didn't make the album or I fucking hate that song, my throwaway yeah. track. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck, dude? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, you, dude, the, it's like uh, sometimes revealing too much about the process that kind of <laughs> right. ruins the experience for people, you know? So, right, right, right. So I'm just like, I just don't say much. Or like, you know what? I get a lot, and I, this is many years ago, I realized this, is um, fans will be like, dude, when you said this, oh, man, it, it meant this, 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 and this, dude. Like, and you know what I mean? And it's like, that's not what I meant, but it's <laughs> fucking dope as fuck that that's the yes. way you interpreted it. And I just, I just go with it. I'm just like, yep, you know? Like, that's yeah, right. whatever you want, yeah. Because at the end of the day, the listener interprets your music how they that's interpret right. it as first person. Yeah. So um, it, that's that's the magic of music, and I really enjoy that as a creator, the effect that music has on people, and it's made me more conscious over the years of the listener. And so sometimes I'm playing, I, I write with creative license with that in mind, you yeah. know, that I know what I'm saying could be interpreted different ways, and and sometimes. You know, I say things that are general in, in, in nature um, that maybe get something off of my chest and it's not intended to be directed at people, but people's insecurities then latch onto that stuff and they yeah. take things like, you know, a different way. Um, and it helps influence people hope mostly for the better because yeah. it makes them conscious of things that maybe they otherwise weren't. Sure. And so, you know, that again is where I'm conscious of the listener and 
think those seedlings of ideas help people mature because it helps them broaden their perspective in yeah. ways that maybe they didn't otherwise consider. Yeah, man. It's uh, a lot of life lessons, man. And uh, yeah, amazing piece of work, man. And uh, also I wanted to shout out Awkward's production too. Like uh, I, I freaking flipped out when I heard the beat for Flight. That was so freaking nuts. It sounded oh, like a Stranger Things sample or something, man. Oh, uh, man. I love that song. I love that song. Yeah, yeah man. That and then, great, uh, man. My favorite opening verse from you was the Magnificent Freedom track that you did, man. So the, we all the uh, we all out. Oh, man. We all the way out. Oh, yeah. God, man. yeah. Yeah. Man. Thank you, man. I, 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 I you know, it's, it's, it's a trip, man. Uh, that being our first Cloaks record. Yeah. And um, seeing how we've evolved and matured in our sound. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a trip, man. I, I appreciate you talking about that first record um, because I feel like like we've 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 grown much yeah. more in our sure. sound. But but the appreciation for that record is very important because yeah. um, it was the cloak's beginnings. That's right. Yeah, I, I, and that's uh, kind of it's funny you mentioned that because uh, that's what I kind of chose was the first albums, man, because we always revert back to the original ones and the one that set the foundation. So, and so even for you, your first solo album, Laws and Flaws, right, um, was another yeah, man. classic for me. And I, I couldn't believe I, I have it on vinyl and I found it. I was like, what? Like, oh, man. So I, I flipped out, man, when I picked a copy of it. But um, can you just talk to me about the making of your actual first solo album? What was yeah, running man. through your head? Um, you know, uh, that album was produced by Mascaria. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think for me at the time, I was part of E Times 2. I was very active in the scene, doing a lot of features and a lot of compilation work. And um, for me, I just knew I needed to evolve and stand on my own two feet because, because I was that, that engine that was leading a lot of things. And, it, and, yeah. and for me, I needed... I needed the validation as an artist for myself to stand yeah. on my own two feet. So I knew that I needed to make a solo record. Yeah. Validation. And, um, and, yeah. and like, and really for myself, not for anybody else, but just because right. I wanted, I wanted to prove to myself that I can put together enough material to make an album. And then yeah. at the same time, I was in such a competitive space being in Los Angeles at that time. That was like at the MySpace days when that album dropped. And oh. um, I remember like, you know, I am like, because I told you earlier that like, you know, my, my crew members and my family, but also the LA underground, even if it wasn't my immediate crew was also my family. So yeah. with my crews, everything that I do is to try to help um, get the crew to fucking be like proud of what I'm doing to represent my crews, even if it's solo work. Yep. So when I made that record, I knew I had to come off fucking hard. I knew it had to be a classic. Like I just could not put out a half-assed record. Yeah. I knew I had to have range and concept in what I talk about. Yeah. I knew it was an opportunity for me to talk about relationship sh shit that not I couldn't talk about on E Times Two records. Um, you know, because I had crying and dying on there. You know, I had uh, memories on there. Yeah. The song memories. Um, and I knew that it, it, I knew that it couldn't just be about battle shit, which was E times two. I mean, even if you go back to E times two, I put out the song reality, which was a relationship song, which was pretty <laughs> abrasive, but I was like, you know, <laughs> anyways, I won't talk about that one too much, but, uh, uh, but, but like, I just knew that like, I needed more space to delve into more solo concepts. And so I remember when, when that record dropped, being super excited to just share it with all of my friends in the LA underground and, and, yeah. and so on. And I remember like the biggest compliment for me at that time when I dropped that record, I remember when I posted it on MySpace, Tumex, who was a great friend and brother of mine, yep. um, commented on my, 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 the post on MySpace and he said, this is an LA classic or something like that, like an Hell LA yeah. classic. And coming from Tumex at that time, yeah. you know, of Mex a Mexican descent was such a place in my heart, you know, and like that meant a lot for me, you know, yeah. to be recognized as a classic from from somebody like him at the time. A legend and, too, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that was and then, and just the love that I got from everybody else was was a lot, you know. But that was my my aim was just trying to stand in my own two feet and get a lot off that I needed to get off. 
personally uh, with that yeah. record. Yeah, I hold that record in high regard. And I know you did the second solo album like five years later. And normally I ask like how that changed you as a person, but you were doing a lot of work in between those two albums, man. So, I mean, you were just working and stuff. But yeah, from a personal standpoint, um, what was different about uh, Laws and Flaws to your second one, Law, uh, the Beautiful Tragedy, like in your opinion? Uh, just, just, just more evolving as a, as a writer yeah uh, trying to stretch and 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 you know push myself with songwriting um trying to do more like bridges in songs as yep. opposed to just hooks so the way i approach songs and formatting um trying to work with different people that i had not worked with before with features that i had on the record and yep. um and continuing like i'm very big if you if you know if you'll notice one thing that I, I really um, focused on, whether it was uh, groups or solo records, I really tend to focus on albums that are just produced by one person. Yeah, I like so that. So at that time, I was working with Circles, and I just feel like it brings a more cohesive you know, Sound. feel. Yeah. And, yeah. Helps me dial in. I try to be more conceptual with a lot of the th al albums I do. Yeah, it's yeah, it's wild, man. And then your catalog too. It's just so crazy, man. You got your solo stuff, the stuff with the cloaks, the stuff with Exalt the Anti, and then you have just amazing collabs up and down the who's who list in hip hop, man. It's it's crazy, crazy man. man. And any yes. favorite um, collabs that you've done that you wanted to talk about? Um, That's probably I've done tough, so, though, man. <laughs> it's dude, I had so many, man. Like, yeah, I I, I don't I I I, I don't. It's it's hard to say that because uh, you don't want to not mention people who That's maybe right. value That's the fair collaborations. Enough. Fair but, enough. But I would say I would say um, you know maybe one that is not uh, with what I whom I would call friends. You know, like if I if we have songs with Ab as you know me Ab and Awol, those are all really meaningful to me. And you know yeah. a lot of the 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 L A you know, legends that I've worked with over time are really important. But, um, you know, one that probably is not a norm for me was when the Cloaks did the song Worthy with uh, Cool Keith. That was, oh. you know, that was a, that was a really I've cool, one. you know, yeah, that, that's on um, Cloak Encounters, Cloak Encounters of the Third Eye oh, uh, I gotta record, the second Cloaks record. That was dope. That was really dope. You know, I, just because I grew up as a big fan of Keith, yeah, um, and that, and now we're we're we, we've got other stuff in the works now. You know, like I just dropped on a song for AWOL's new solo record. He has that's, you know, that 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 Keith produced, uh, and uh, you know, it's like it's like you know, there's it's you know, we've come a long way. Uh, we're working with you know legends that we grew up listening to are now like you know artists that we work with almost regularly or just like it's not surprising so, anymore. You know. But uh, yeah, that that there's there's plenty of songs and collabs that I love. Um, Beautiful tragedy, the self-titled track with Ab is always going to be one um, because it was the first song that I did with him, and it was the title track of that second solo album that I did. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a banger. It's a classic, you know. So, but there's a lot. There's a lot, man. Yeah. There's, there's there's a ton out there, you know. No, just, that's a good point, man. You just don't want to leave anybody out, man. And so that that probably wasn't a fair question, but it, I even, you know, like I'm really I'm really stoked to have uh, have a song coming out with Mestizo too soon. I know. I saw I saw that you guys connected, man. The good brother yeah. Mestizo, man, when he went to L.A. Yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah. yeah, he's another one who's sitting it sitting on fire, man. Oh man, he's he's an amazing artist, an amazing friend and dude overall. Uh he's he's a, a real respectable homie that uh you know I have a lot of love for. And I was glad that we we did a a really dope song that is a classic. And uh, so he came down he came down just so we could shoot that video and he could visit some family. Oh, um, video too. Yeah, he that's, you know, that's why he came down, man, to visit some family and to shoot that video. Because oh. he was it was supposed to be for his next record, but he was, uh, we were both so excited about it, but he's like, I think I got to just drop it as a single. It's just too dope. Like we got to, so we're both excited about that. And I'm, and, okay. and that's a really dope to collab with him after so many years on yep. a song uh, with just he and I, he's, he was on the last cloaks record. He was on the beautiful tragedy record on the posse cut. Um, we've been on other posse cuts together and shit like that too in the past, but to get one in with him, 
uh, where we kind of go back and forth and it's a classic and it's just dope. Yeah, I, lo I love that dude, man. Such a good and humble person, man. And I'm excited to see this video. Crazy. I yeah. thought he was just in vacation and y'all just hooked up. But damn, yeah. even scarier that you guys did a track together. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, hey, man, another thing I wanted to bring up, too, about you is, uh, you know, um, just uh, your, your performance game, man. So you you are always killing it and you're always performing. And uh, any any tips for the young guys uh, trying to get out there and perform, man? Is it just getting out there and doing it? Or um, is there a science to, to when you're doing it, planning your sets? Um, you know, I am very uh, – I do plan my sets. Um you know, mm -hmm. I, again, I, I think about the listener. I think about the audience. Yep. I think about you know my choruses when I'm writing them. How what, you know how they'll play out when I when I perform. Um, but I'm a I'm a naturally high energy person, uh, and so I think that translates for me into my performances. Um, you know, I tend to get a little more um, punk and radical. Um, I'm, I, those are you know I mean I'm I'm really aggressive. Um, I guess I'm very high energy. Um, yeah. like I, I just, I just have a lot of energy, man. And, you know, my performance is, it really comes out. Um, I get, it's, it's a way for me to exercise, you know, and get off energy and blow off some steam. And, yeah. and, and, and with that, try to come across with some, you know, kind of captivating and engaging for the audience. Um, that's, that's, I try to be a, a showman as much as possible when I'm performing. And, um, man, <clears throat> yeah, that's, 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 you know, I think offering, you know, people any insights with performing is, um, just having, just doing whatever you do with conviction and passion, just do it. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Just go be everything you want to be when you're out there and leave it all out on the stage. You know what I'm saying? And it's good and, advice. Uh, appre appreciate your craft. And, and love it and you can't go wrong no matter what anybody says if you're pouring your heart out you know yeah. then and and do things for yourself and everything else should come together you know what i mean yeah like, yeah that's yeah. dope man well yeah man it's, it's been dope man watching you kill it very inspiring you're not slowing down a bit man so that's that's wild yeah yeah uh, merch game is on point, man. And so, but man, you got to find time to do stuff for fun outside of music. What, what does Gil Rock do for fun? Outside oh, of I, I, I have a lot of crews, man. Um, I used to, uh, I used to play, uh, basketball in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, what we coined as the vampire basketball league. We would, <laughs> we, would, we, would we would play it. We, we get to the gym at 4 30 AM and, oh, um, damn. Okay. you had to, you had to be like, in order to get on the court and be the first 10, like we would be like, you had to get there at like 4 15 before the gym Super. opened at 4 30. Uh -huh. And, you know, we'd warm up and we'd start at five o'clock. And so uh, I love to play basketball, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm a shit talker. I'm high energy. My game, <laughs> my, 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 game, my game is tight. I'm sick with it, but I talk a lot of shit. And then uh, as I got older, I, you know, I think I, I broke my arm really nasty like five years ago, you know, yeah. and it was and, and then shortly after that, I um, had to have knee surgery because I, I'm, I. Oh, I, man. I don't, I don't play. I'm very competitive on the court. So I'm constantly running. Like you have to keep up with me. And if you give me any space, I'm going to shoot it. Ooh. It's going to, I'm going to talk <clears throat> shit when it drops through the net. And like, but like one thing is like you, defensively, you ain't going to be able to keep up with me. You yeah. know what I mean? Man. And so it just became too taxing. So I can't play ball like I used to. Um, I, I had a disc golf crew, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, um, you know, frisbee golf yeah, you know what i'm saying huh? because so i'm active i go to the gym a lot i i just stay active like i said i'm high energy and i need an outlet <clears throat> yeah. so i just need outlets and so i have a lot of crews and and, and do a lot of shit so like you know right. i used to do that but i moved away from 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 the homies and so i haven't done that i've been playing ball so right now i'm just i'm in the gym and mostly i try to spend time with my kids because my kids are older now yeah so, you know one's in college <clears throat> one's just grown doing his thing and so you know, I just try to spend quality time with my loved ones, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, 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 you know, um, that's it, man. You know what I mean? Have a good time and, and, and try to live life as much as possible or travel. You know what I'm saying? I've been traveling, just got back from Costa Rica. Nice. Um, yeah. Just, you know, I was almost able to book a show out there, but it was sort of last minute. Um, 
So I did, I didn't, that didn't happen, but it was going to happen. That's just the fact that I can do shit like that was dope. Would have been freaking um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been really tight. And I, and I'm going to go back, I think next year and go out there to paint and I'll okay. probably book a show out there. Like it'll be more. So, cause like, I didn't want to compromise my, you know, time vacationing. Yeah. That's also right. Working, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like some of that's getting away from, from music, but like, that's my brain is hard to like stop working. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I, 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 I enjoy spending time with my loved ones for the most part nowadays. Life is short and time goes fast. So you got to spend quality time with your, with your peoples, you know? Uh, that's a good point, man. And, um, and we talked about it, a lot of projects in the works, uh, 2024 sounds like it's going to be really exciting for Gil Rock's catalog. Yeah, but- man. I'm, I'm trying to just keep, keep, I, I, you know, I, I'm almost like a project manager, if you will. Cause I kind of yeah. run my, my run the label and I'm like, you know, I'm constantly thinking of release dates and, you know, how much time it takes things for press and manufacturing. And yeah. so I'm always thinking ahead. So if, if all goes well, 2024, we'll see an Exalt the Anti 3 album, which um, we haven't named the album Ooh. yet. So um, 2024, if we're lucky, could see a Cloaks 4 record. Uh, we made amazing progress to start this year, but then um, AWOL was moving and life okay. took its course and so um yeah. you know we may get it in 2024 it may be a 2025 release okay uh depends on how much uh you know we can kind of pick back up where we left off um and then but we are going to be dropping some really cool um actually uh, real quickly um the next project we're dropping so we did a cloakwork orange um Right there behind you, I see it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's 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 cloak encounters of the third. Yeah. Oh man, that's so dope. I love the display. Dope. Some other artwork. There's the first cloaks record, and there's uh, a cloakwork yeah. orange. Yeah, and I love other, that cover. All my solo Lawson. records and oh, records and grand, grandeur and Yo. poetry of oh. war. Mass elements produced by Avatar. Rest in peace, Avatar. Oh, um, man. E times two records. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, the Cloakwork Orange, um, on, uh, I think the week after Thanksgiving, we're going to drop a Cloak Rework Orange, which is the entire album remixed by a slew of different producers. Oh, sick. Um, and so that's going to drop probably the week after Thanksgiving. And we're going to put up, um, we did, we, I just got five test press and I'm going to put these up probably they're going to be a little bit pricier but we've got five unique uh Ooh, sleeves. Oh, the art is disgusting so each oh. test press is it's only going to be one test press you know five test press with unique artwork you'll never be able to Ooh, get ever again that is so sick yeah so um you know we're we're and this is by brain a um oh, man and so these are double vinyl you know it's going to be a double vinyl record um production by so many people d styles uh, oh, OG Con- awkward uh controller seven d styles ac alone oh, damn. factor um let's see uh ac alone produced a couple joints kenny siegel paris oh, zax phono uh mega abusive and uh i think that's everybody hopefully i didn't miss anybody but yeah man we're gonna so we'll drop these test press uh, and then the actual uh, double vinyl will drop probably soon thereafter. Um, we've got some really, we got some really cool cloaks merch. So we will be releasing cloaks, um, <clears throat> the new double vinyl remix album this Man. year, and yeah, um, and so we'll, we'll stay busy doing cloak stuff. And then 2024, we'll also definitely see another Gel Rock solo record. Nice. Um, I don't want to get into too much details about it right now. I'm trying to keep some of it under wraps because I'm so yep. excited about it. Oh um, man! And then, you know, I'm sure. I'm guessing. I don't really know when the the video that me and Mestizo is going to come out. Might maybe this year, maybe 2024. But Jeez. either way, man, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be putting out a lot of different stuff, man. And so we're excited, you know. Yeah. Oh man, I look forward to it. Very exciting for music. Well, hey, man, before we wrap this thing up, man, where, where's the best place to find Gel Rock's music, man? Um, AbalanoRecords.com, A-B-O-L-A-N-O, records.com. 
Um, you can find me on Instagram at um, G E L R O C. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, man, on the socials, you can Google it, you know what I mean, and find the music, or you can go on any of the, you know, digital streaming platforms, iTunes Music, Spotify, and just put G-E-L space R-O-C, and uh, a lot of my, my solo um, records will come up, or you can check out The Cloaks, join The yeah. Cloaks, um, <clears throat> and, and Exalt the Anti, and, you That's know, it. Times too. all that stuff's out there, man. Right on, much, man. Much love, much love to you uh, for having me on. Um, yeah, we thank gotta you. Get, get, we got to do a joint. You know what I'm saying? I would be honored, my man. Yeah, we got to do a joint. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we could get you on the Exalt the Anti record. I think that makes yeah. sense. Um, you know, just because you know you, we all we're all we're all friends now. So like, yeah, um, we have a we have a posse cut that we're gonna do for the record. Maybe you could jump on that. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, late. Uh, be that'd yeah. be dope, man. Well, I, w- I wanted to just thank you, man. It was a very uh, insightful interview, man. You're a very intelligent, man. And I love your uh, perspective and thought and just the history, everything that you have done for hip hop, uh, what you have done for Southern California hip hop and then expanded worldwide. I mean, you guys did something, man. It was a movement. And I'm so honored to be able to talk to one of the pioneers who did that for hip hop, man. Thank you so much, man. I look forward to building and just uh, really just getting this interview out and and sharing history, man. Thank you so much, Gil. Much love. Appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, let's keep it moving. All right, man. Enjoy your weekend. You too, brother.